Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition Remaster and how this game performs on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So the release of this game has been pretty disastrous so far with it being completely offline for the last few days even after release. However, it's now come back online and I'm going to be looking at its performance on my M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 inch with 32 gigabytes of RAM, 32 GPU cores and 10 CPU cores. So the first thing to mention is that this is a Windows only port of the game. This is despite the fact that the entire GTA trilogy was originally released on Mac OS back in the day. However, Rockstar have made no announcements about releasing the GTA trilogy remaster on the Mac operating system or on any of the new Apple Silicon Macs. Therefore, the gameplay that you're seeing now is being recorded through Parallels, which is a virtual machine software. If you're interested in finding out how to get Windows gaming working on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please check out my video tutorial. I'll leave a link to this in the description. It's going to tell you step by step how to get Windows working on your Mac. So there is an alternate method of running Windows titles on the Mac operating system, and that is crossover. So this is something that I've attempted so far. However, the results have not been great. So when you try to boot this game up in crossover, the user interface all loads correctly. You can hear all the sounds. You can even move about in game. However, the entire game world does not render correctly. It's just a black screen. So the reason this happens is because Metal, which is Apple's graphics API, does not support geometry shaders. And the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition is wrapped in Unreal Engine 4, which makes use of geometry shaders. So unfortunately, crossover is not going to be an option in this instance. So instead, we're going to be making use of Parallels, which is a virtual machine software. The main disadvantage with running a virtual machine is that we can only allocate half of the CPU cores and half of the RAM to that virtual machine. Plus, we have the entire overhead of running Windows 11 ARM in the background as well. However, we do have enough performance to be able to get this game to run. So first up is GTA 3. So this is the first game in this trilogy, and I've actually turned all of these settings down to the lowest possible, and I've turned it down to 720p. I've actually tried running this at higher resolution and at higher settings, and the performance is pretty terrible, I'm afraid. So what you'll see through most of the open world sequences is that we're running a frame rate of around 35 FPS. However, when we actually start driving around, we're getting closer to 25 to 20 FPS. This is despite the fact that we've turned all of the settings down, which kind of begs the question, what's the point of playing a remaster if you just have to turn down all of the bells and whistles? Within smaller areas and within cutscenes, the frame rate does increase to around 45 FPS, but this isn't really the majority of the game and it's non-interactive gameplay. So it's a little bit disappointing that we can't get this game running at a faster frame rate, especially as I don't think it looks particularly good. There are much better looking games that run much faster through parallels on the M1 Max. However, this has now become the only legitimate way to play this game on Apple Mac hardware. And that's because all of the original GTA titles were removed from Steam in order to make way for this definitive edition. Rockstar have even gone out of their way to kill the only macOS port of this game. So RE3, which is on the left hand side of the screen, is being played through my MacBook Air 2020 with 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. So RE3 was a reverse engineered source port of this game, which would allow this game to be played on hardware that it wasn't originally designed for. All you needed to do was to get your Grand Theft Auto 3 files from Steam or any other source and then copy them into the RE3 engine. And then you could be playing this game directly on a modern Apple Silicon Mac. However, Take-Two, the publishers of GTA 3, have taken down this project, and not only that, they've taken the original mod authors to court and have begun a lawsuit against them. If development had been allowed to continue, we could have easily seen a native ARM port for Apple Silicon Max, which would have taken full advantage of the hardware, as well as been given full support for graphical overhaul mods. Although the official GitHub project pages are down and development has been ceased, it's still possible to play RE3 on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Please check a link in the description for my video tutorial. So next up is GTA Vice City, which I'm also running at the lowest possible settings at 720p. So these games are all built on the same engine, so we're expecting very similar performance. So within cutscenes, we're getting 60 FPS. However, during the open world driving segments, we're getting around 20 to 25 FPS. And in some sections, the frame rate really dips and we're getting as low as 17 FPS. So next up is GTA San Andreas, and I'm running it at the same settings at 720p with everything turned down to low or off. So funnily enough, this game does feel like it performs the best out of all of them, despite the fact that this is the newest edition in this trilogy. In these interior cutscenes, we're hitting around 80 to 90 FPS. And in the open world with vehicles, we're more consistently hitting around 30 FPS to 35 FPS. So the reality is that the performance of this game is not really great, especially considering how much money the M1 Max chip costs. Plus you have to factor in the costs of the Parallels license too. So if you do have the opportunity to play this game on a different platform, for example on a PC or a console, then I definitely recommend that instead. 
So there might still be hope that this game could be playable on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. That's because the mobile ports of these games are still available on the App Store. If you do a search for Grand Theft Auto and click on the iPhone iPad tab, you'll see all of these here, and these are due to be delisted soon. That's because they are due to be replaced by the definitive editions of this game, and it remains to be seen whether these are going to be downloadable on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. There's nothing stopping Rockstar from taking their future mobile ports, adding some keyboard and mouse and controller support, then adding the widescreen aspect ratio as well, and then we basically have a full native ARM Mac port of the game running properly on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. However, but given how shockingly badly they've handled the re-release of this game, which should have been the easiest home run to hit in the world, I don't really have much hope for a proper native macOS port. However, it's something that's still technically possible in the future. So if you'd like to see more footage of these games running through parallels of the M1 Max chip, then please follow the links in the descriptions. I've got full benchmark videos for all three games. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.